Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to watch a video about a helicopter that was landing in Utah. They were coming in to drop off Santa Claus for a community event, and as the helicopter was coming down, they hit some debris. So in this video, we are going to break down what happened, why it happened. I'll give my perspective about what potentially could have been done differently, how I would have handled that situation. Uh, let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna get started here in the helicopter pilot Facebook group. I think, I believe this is the first place that I saw this incident happen. You know, when something happens nowadays, you get instant access to the video. So I believe this is the first video that I saw. So let's watch this, then we'll watch a couple news reports, see what the news people think happened. Um, but just like I said in, in the intro of this video, this helicopter was coming in in Cedar City. Uh, yeah, Cedar City, Utah, to drop off Santa Claus, and uh, I'll let the video play out. Mm. All right, let's see if I can bump up the quality real quick. Ooh, maybe I can't. Let's turn this down a little bit. All right, so... Looks to be a 407. 407 is my favorite helicopter I've ever flown. I love the 407. It is super agile, super quick to respond. The FADEC does a great job. Uh, the power to weight ratio is great, especially in this situation where you're, the helicopter is likely not all the way at max gross weight. It's just got a ton of power. You can do a lot with this helicopter. Very nimble, very agile. I love it. So 407 coming in. Now, so this looks like a main strip here. Let me talk about the zone here. Um, I don't love this landing zone here it's not the worst so no power lines we're starting to look for like from the top down no power lines we do have this uh building sign not that big of a factor it looks like there's wide enough berth and then you have this light pole here not that bad um i don't like that the crowd control is not held back now as a pilot sometimes in this situation you know you don't always have the option to pick the exact spot i'm just critiquing things better so like what i do helicopter air ambulance you know if we're going to a scene call where there's a traumatic injury things are happening very quickly because the incident just happened fire uh the fire department is setting up the lz so things are happening really quickly and they don't they can't pick the best lz when you've got a community event like this you have the ability to plan things and put things into place so what i would have liked to seen is some guards here so that you know, some like people guard some metal rails so that people can't walk out here. <sighs> what you're gonna see is that, okay, so let's keep going. Any other hazards? Eh, no, I mean, it looks like a pretty good road. I'm, I'm really not super offended by it, but I don't love it. Eh, it's a fine, it's a fine LZ. What you're gonna see is someone or some, I'm not exactly sure what this thing is. It looks like maybe a tarp, maybe a poster, maybe like a fabric poster a flag potentially comes in it gets picked up by the downwash so for anyone that doesn't know in general rotor arcs rotor wash looks like this so the helicopter is flying and then downwash comes down out and around it starts enveloping this can become a problem in a situation called vortex ring state or settling with power but that is how the vortices look so they go down out and around so with our tarp here the downwash from the 407 is coming down hitting the ground probably bouncing up a little bit and then you know just with all this turbulence it's getting picked back up and then at once it's above the rotor disc the rotor disc is acting like a big vacuum and sucking it in so it's going to suck in this tarp flag thing mm, i wish this quality was a little bit better okay so let's break this down Coming in, everything's fine. As I'm coming in on an approach, that is like the hardest portion of my job. Like the, the approach is the hardest part of my day. I'm thinking about absolutely everything. So as I'm coming in, I'm watching my airspeed, watching my vertical descent. I'm watching everything around me. I'm looking for FOD. They likely did an orbit before and they just evaluated the LZ, but they're they're looking for FOD. Now, if this pilot is in this helicopter alone with just Santa Claus, uh, Santa is probably in the backseat and he's not really able to help. One thing I do love about helicopter air ambulance is as we're coming working in a helicopter air ambulance environment is as we're coming into a zone, I've got a paramedic or 
sometimes a nurse up front with me and a nurse in the back and these people are trained to look for this so i've got eyes and ears and everything to help me so this pilot could have been alone and maybe he didn't see because as he comes past he doesn't he probably doesn't see the tarp from over here the pilot in the 407 is sitting on the right side of the helicopter so the tarp is on the left side to him and it's in his back corner it's in a blind spot like he's in a real tough situation to see this i mean it's it's not ideal so he's coming down it gets picked up it's behind him let's see how he reacts so coming down pretty quickly he, he responds and initiates a go around now i've never had this happen to me and you know all of the emergency abnormal procedures that we train for are abnormal and emergencies they're not something that we deal with it regularly so that moment that time that it actually does happen there's a split second where you have to figure out what's going on and make your decision like all obviously we're taught to always do go arounds like if you don't like anything if you hear anything if you see anything you know you do a go around but this pilot you know he's gonna hear this and he's gonna see probably his rotor rpm change a little bit as the blades spin down a little bit he's gonna definitely feel the vibration from this he's probably gonna get a little bit of a yaw change because maybe the, that disc is maybe slowing down just a touch so maybe there's getting a yaw change um but you're definitely gonna feel the vibration as your blades come down and suck and suck in this tarp and then cut it up he's gonna feel those vibrations in the cyclic and collective so he's got to establish like what is going on like check my gauges what's going on pretty quickly i mean he probably figured out what was going on i mean that's a very quick thought process that you gotta go through to figure out what's going on i mean you're thinking like am i having a transmission problem am i having an engine problem is my tail rotor having a problem what is going on to establish that and then determine can i go around is this the prudent choice or do i need to get this helicopter on the ground you know if you're thinking i have an engine problem or a transmission problem or a tail rotor problem or a flight control problem maybe i need to get this helicopter down on the ground like in this position or can i go around so i mean these are the thoughts that you're having and it's a very the pilot did a really good job because this is a very quick, rapid sequence of events that he has to make a decision, evaluate everything that's going on, and go. Um, so let's watch this again. So for, I, I want to just think about like the time from when we hear and see the tarp get sucked in. And things are going to happen a little bit quicker for the pilot because there's some audio delay. But let's see how quickly he responds. I think that's really good. I, I applaud the pilot. Um, I think that is really a pretty quick reaction time to evaluate. I mean, you got to think about all of the different things that could potentially be happening to make the decision. Okay, yes, let's go around. Let's pull power. Let's get ourselves higher versus getting on the ground, which you have to think as a helicopter pilot. One of the things we're always thinking about is like, we got to get this thing on the ground. Rotor RPM is life. If I have a problem, I need to get down on the ground. One, two, three. Maybe four? Okay, so let's count. One, two, three, four. He's going. Four to five seconds? I mean, I think I think that's really good. I mean, you, you, you're you trying to evaluate everything, see your gauges, understand what's going on, still fly the helicopter. I think that's great. Pulls power, goes around. I wish, I mean, this is, this is a tough situation. So, uh, we'll break down, actually, let's go over to the video of the news reporter. We're going to watch this too, but just my, my general thoughts before we kind of summarize, I think the pilot did a really good job. I, now that I'm, I've, I haven't actually watched the full video and I haven't watched this news report, but I really think the setup of this is, is kind of where this failed. You know, if you have the time to set up, does Santa have to be right there? Is there a bigger parking lot? Maybe that we can do some crowd control, that we can prevent people from bringing in tarps and posters and stuff. The, the setup is not ideal. And I mean, l let's be fair and honest. I mean, the city or whoever planned this event, I mean, this is kind of on them, but you as the pilot or the operator or the organization beforehand you should go do you know a ground run and you should go see what's going on now you can't plan on exactly this happening but you can do a little bit of forethought that crowd control would be better and the further away you can get people the better 
Scrolling through Facebook, you may have stumbled upon this video where a helicopter carrying Santa had to abort mission. After a closer look, witnesses saw something fly into the helicopter and it made them wonder what happened and could that have been worse? Well, yes. I spoke with one expert in search of those yes. answers. Santa landing in a helicopter on Main Street has been a Cedar City tradition for years, but this year, let's just say things. I love that. I love that American holiday spirit drop Santa Claus off in a helicopter like, yes, <laughs> I love that. Didn't go as planned. The helicopter comes down at 20, 30 feet off the ground or whatever, and then it just goes back up and everybody's like, okay, so is he going to come around? Steve Holm was in the crowd and started to hear chatter. No, it's not going to come around. And I mean, one thing that you got to think about is if you do pull a goal around, get yourself out of this situation. I'm... If I had the thought process to think through, like, okay, I definitely had some fun. I'm probably doing a precautionary landing. I'm going to fly to maybe the nearest airport if you got one real close, but I may put this thing down in a field. I don't want to fly. I do not want to fly this helicopter for any longer than I have to. I might put this down in a parking lot in, in a field. I'm not going to land it on a road probably, but I need to make sure that my aircraft is still airworthy. I need to get this thing on the ground. I need to do an inspection. I'm probably going to have my maintenance team come out. I am getting this helicopter on the ground rather quickly now like i said i'm not gonna put it down in the road i'm not gonna probably put it down in a hazardous situation but near area nearest close area i'm gonna look at the airports if there's one real close by and i think i can make it yeah but no santa's not coming back after this happens santa is done for the night at least in the helicopter maybe santa makes an appearance in the car sure hey a piece of material hit that helicopter it was gone out of the way and then we're sitting here like that could have been really, really bad. Amy Pichette was also in the crowd, and well, she had one way to describe it. Reminds me of Final Destination. Pichette was also recording when the helicopter came down. I had my phone out, something smacked my hand, my phone went flying. I told my oldest, I'm like, Michaela, shine your phone down, and like she does, and my hand's just like dripping blood. After getting hit with the debris, she went to the hospital to get stitches, but still thinks it could have been worse. If my hand wasn't there, that would have hit my daughter in the face. So what happened exactly? Well, Michael Maurer from SUU Aviation, the company who owns the chopper, walked me through it. It looks like something blew off off the roof of uh, some new construction and just came down through the uh, the rotor system. They landed at a nearby airport. Maurer says they walked the landing zone prior and says only senior pilots fly Santa in. We walked and we were looking. Okay, so this gives me some more credence. They did walk this beforehand. This is a tough situation because if you walk, I mean, I give them credit, you know, they walked it, they had their more experienced pilots. This is SUU. This is a very, very high level training school. They do very, very good uh, education. They're training their pilots to a very high level, um, to a very high level. Sucks that this lady got hurt. So what exactly was it that blew off? It appears to be some roofing membrane. Uh, that plastic membrane that they put on uh, the roofs for to waterproof them. Mauer says while there were no mm. injuries. Yeah, so that plastic roofing underlayment, man, this this is really unfortunate. I mean, what could you have done to prevent that? The construction company could have secured the, if it was on the roof, uh, the the membrane down to the roof, or the construction company could have secured it better. But I mean, I'll be honest, of the 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 thousands of hours, the hundreds of thousands, the millions of hours that helicopters fly every single year. You are going to have some situations that you just can't prevent and you can't see coming. This, they probably didn't see coming. You know, they did all of the things that, all the things right. You know, you do a walkthrough, you've got a good LZ. The only thing that could have been done better is, you know, a larger area. You know, if you're in a big open parking lot or a big open field, it's hard for certain things to happen. I mean, that gives you like a large margin. Uh, this is a little bit of a tighter margin, but still, it sounds like they did things right and I'll be honest, like, like I said, it's not a great answer, but I mean, sometimes things just happen. That sounds like th that's what this was. These are damages inside the chopper. Next year, they may reevaluate nearby buildings, the landing zone, and distance between the chopper and residents. Yep. There's no way around it. Aviation, you know, is dangerous and can be dangerous. Um, we do everything we can to, to take the appropriate precautions. And while some still don't want the tradition to end. You're feeling the wind blow, blowing through your face and your hair standing straight up and whatever. That's a rush and it's amazing. Some would be fine going back to a sleigh and reindeer. You don't land a helicopter on Main Street. Now the city told me it's going to take time to decide whether or not that helicopter. All right, so synopsis here. Um, 
what do I think? I think the pilot did a good job with the cards they were dealt. They tried to prevent everything by doing a walkthrough. They have senior experienced pilots, very credible organization and school. Not, I can't say anything bad about SUU. I know many pilots. I work with many pilots that have gone to SUU. They are phenomenal pilots. So they obviously know what they're doing. A larger LZ would have been better. Um, try, having the construction company secure that. But they also probably don't think a helicopter is going to come land right there. I don't know. It's just a confluence of events. Uh, what do I think about Santa landing in a helicopter? I think it's really cool. There's a lot of risk here. Um, but, you know, if you do everything right, there shouldn't have been a problem here. And you can't see this coming. So... I think th this is unfortunate. I think the pilot did a really good job evaluating what has happened and what you need to do next. I mean, that was pretty quick. I, I thought that was quite impressive. Uh, I don't really have too much more to say. I think the pilot did a really good job. This is unfortunate. If they want to continue doing this, they're going to obviously be more cautious of hazards. You know, this is something that we have to think about when I when we land on rooftops in the helicopter air and ambulance industry. We land on rooftops and sometimes they're doing construction. And if you fly over some construction, you can get tarps, plywood, um, roofing underlayment you can get all these things to come up into your rotor system so you're constantly thinking about this this is a huge hazard and luckily this did not go worse i mean they got very lucky everyone got very lucky unfortunately that lady her hand did get hurt but in general they got everyone here was very fortunate that this wasn't a bad outcome so let me know your thoughts down below what do you think did the pilot do a good job what could have been done better how should they have prevented this and uh should they keep this tradition going let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and i will see you on the next one take care